Hi guys. Hi guys! Welcome back to Violating Community Guidelines. I'll let you have that one. Thank you. With Brittany Broski. <laughs> and Sarah Shower. Mm, and today we're going to be talking about... Russian bots. Or just bots in general. Yeah, just general bots. You just know, bots online. Mm-hmm, you know them, you love them. You've seen them. They're everywhere. Tell me I'm sexy. I have nice booty. <laughs> Do <laughs> not click my story. <laughs> yes. Click link in my bio. Yeah. Um. So... We're going to do some disclaimers. This is a very broad topic. So we're going to just cut it down a little bit. You talk about bots, like social media bots, like what they are, who they are. Also, how they are. They're an important factor when it comes to, you know, the harmful growth of misinformation that exists online. Yes. Um, If I'm not spreading it, then bots sure are. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) And so then a third disclaimer. It's pretty uh, intensive. Okay, yeah. So Stanley's just like pick and choose what you want. Stanley said, please just be gentle yeah because <laughs> this gets into like a bot isn't just what you think you know like on instagram yeah or it's like a dm me now struggling for five thousand dollars like it's not just that it's literally like even things like well there's some examples here mm-hmm. even things like when you're on the bank of america app and it's like hello how can i help you today yeah that's a bot things like alexa and siri those are considered bots mm-hmm. you know like there are so many different types of whether they're there to help you or whether they're there to do harm, mm-hmm. like malware, install malware on your computer and all that. So there's a bunch of different types we're going to go over, but we mainly want to talk about probably the TikTok and Instagram bots. Yeah. I keep, those are good. Yeah. I keep touching my face to this mic. So but yes, we're going to talk about those. I, you know what, like I was thinking about whenever there's like a little screen that pops up, like with the little cubes, it's like click all the spaces with like a traffic light. Yeah. For some reason, my brain just blanks on like what a traffic light looks like. Yeah, I'm like, okay, I've, there's three cubes with a traffic, li- but what if these are traffic lights? Yeah, what if you it's know? a trick question? It's like that meme where it's like you go like you go through TSA and you're like, oh my god, do I have a gun on me? Literally. Meanwhile, yeah. you don't own a gun. Yeah. It's like your brain is just like second guessing like yeah. basic shit. I hope I took the coke out of my bag. Oh, there was no <laughs> coke in my bag. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna talk about what is a bot. Um, a bot, short for a robot, also called an internet bot, is a computer program that operates as an agent for a user or other program or to stimulate or simulate a human activity. Bots are normally used to automate certain tasks, meaning they can run without specific instructions from humans. Yes. Um, an organization or individual can use a bot to replace a repetitive task that a human would otherwise have to perform. Um, like laundry. Yes, exactly. And cooking and cleaning. Yeah. Or just have Alexa do it. <laughs> Alexa do my laundry? How slay would that be? To, it, uh, Amazon's like, we're introducing physical Alexa. Yeah. She comes, you have to like invite her in. I think that anything to drink? Also be terrifying again. Like uh, there's yeah. so many movies based around how robots like take over yeah. the world. They become sentient and they're like, why am I being treated like shit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're a human now. Yeah. I think it's so spy kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, because later on they introduce, as always, when we talk about robots or ai it's not that it inherently is bad it's that whoever programmed it programmed it to be good or evil you Mm -hmm. know what i mean it's not like the the technology itself is neutral yeah we've talked about that a lot on here you know like with the evolution of the technological age it's like whoever is imprinting their biases biases or mission or agenda upon this that's what it's going to be used for so to have an opinion of bots or of robots, you know, or even as they're used online, mm-hmm. I feel like overall they kind of have a negative opinion. Yeah. When we'll go on to discuss some examples, but like they're really used for good and assisting us, mm-hmm. especially when things like customer service. I've had multiple issues fixed with like the internet or my phone bill or like whatever by just talking to the chat bot yeah. online and it's like crazy that that works. Yeah. I'm like, help. You just like, need- hello, I'm here to help. You just need someone to talk to. Hey. <laughs> my computer's <laughs> broken, but also I'm sad. Yeah, you sound hot. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's just AI. Someone's just listening to you. <laughs> Um, an organization or individual can use a bot, yes. Okay, so although bots can carry out useful functions, they can also be malicious and come in the form of malware. Yeah. Um. Literally, <laughs> literally, like, I had to, um, I finally got, like, my first couple, like, real viruses the other day, and I had to spend, like, two hours. <laughs> so what's a fake virus? Well, I mean, like, the ones that, like, you can't shit off your computer. And I was like, this is me. I need to learn, like, how to take care of my computer. Right. But I had to talk to this, like, tech guy for, like, two hours, and he, like, took over remotely, took over my computer, and he's like, what is this? <laughs> 
<laughs> I was like, sorry, I watch a lot of porn, you know? Oh, my God. <laughs> what is this? Literally, before he was like, before I get on your screen, is there anything you want to close out that I shouldn't see? <laughs> Literally, like, the porn that I was watching, I was like, yes, thank you for asking. You watch porn on your laptop? <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like Cinemax, you know? Holy like shit. IMAX. I kind of just like. Whatever. You have a VR glove. Yes. <laughs> one like blue and one like red lens. <laughs> where it's like 3D. It's the Christmas <laughs> yes. 2D goggle. Everything's a snowflake. Yes. Um, but a little bit how bots work. Uh, normally bots operate <laughs> over a network. Um, they communicate with one another using internet-based services such as um, instant messaging interfaces like Twitter bots or internet relay chat. According to the 2021 research report titled Bot Attacks, Top Threats and Trends from Security firm barracuda more than two-thirds of internet traffic is bots that is so crazy to me i don't believe that i mean i feel like there's a i see a lot of bots like everywhere i asked my instagram uh followers to comment on one of my um pictures with like comments from like bots like what a bot (laughs) comment so i want to read some of them like there's like um so like some of the top comments are uh who wants me Fire emoji. Hello, tell me I'm beautiful. That's a good one. Yeah. Hey, I love you. What is wow? Beautiful. <laughs> Check your DMs. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Yes. Like the way that bots talk is so like. But the thing is, is I know that there's simple people, perverts, who are like, this is a real person. Yes. You We're know? like, this sounds like a woman. <laughs> yes. Any boys from America here? Hi. Mm. <laughs> Hi, I am very beautiful. Let's chat. <laughs> very beautiful? Question <laughs> yes. mark. I love an insecure woman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I used to comment back on some of them on my TikToks and be like, um, girl, be confident. Yeah. Like, you are beautiful. You got this. Yeah. Don't be fishing in my comments. <laughs> yes. um, in addition, 67% of bad bot traffic originates from public data centers in North America. Oh, my God. Americans. Let's go. Jesus, 67%. Woo. What is wrong with us? For example, a chatbot uses one of several methods to operate. A rule-based chatbot interacts with a person by giving predefined prompts for that individual to select. So, yeah, like when you need help on your computer. Horny? Yes. Oh. Oh, yeah. Horny? Yes, no. <laughs> Horny, want to see my tits? <laughs> ask me later. <laughs> ask, no, ask me in an hour. <laughs> yeah, this one is, uh, how can I help you today? Yeah. Um, an intellectually independent chatbot uses machine learning to learn from human inputs and scan for valuable keywords that can trigger an interaction. I am sexy. Mm-hmm. Um, artificial intelligent chatbots are a combination of rule-based and intellectually independent chatbots. They're hybrid. Um, and then chatbots may also use pattern matching, natural language processing, NLP, and natural language generation tools. That's that scary robot shit. Mm-hmm. And natural language processing. Y'all, you ever watch any videos on that? No. Wild. What is? Tell me about it. It's just natural language processing. Dude, you've said so much. No, I know. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yes. So there's types of bots, you know, like chat bots, social bots, shop bots, no bots, spiders, or crawlers. Chat bots, like we talked about, <laughs> red you know. Red bots, blue bots, yes. green bots. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you're a blue bot, a red bot. <laughs> yeah. Zebra bot. Yeah. But uh, chatbots, you know, like they uh, simulate conversation with a human being, first developed in 1966 at MIT, would you believe? (laughs) The chatbot pretended to be a psychotherapist and answered questions with other questions. Would be so frustrating. That would be so... Oh, wait, that's a game that you play in theater where you like... Okay, so I don't know if actually if this is a theater game, but our theater, like, kids... (laughs) We would split in half, and then like one person would face the other person, and you'd have to ask a question. They could only answer with a question, and then sometimes like that, if you answered with like a word or like an actual answer, you'd go to the back of the line. Oh, uh, yeah. Should we do it? No, I'm too. I'm not good at like. Th- Let's no. do it. <laughs> um, what's up? Where were you yesterday? Why does it matter? <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> that was slay, dude. I just answered a question <laughs> with a question. <laughs> do it again. Okay. Are those mine? Or what yours? Are those mine? Are you talking about my pants? <laughs> Why are you wearing my pants? Why would I not wear your pants? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you take some out of your own closet? Why'd you leave them in the washer? <laughs> Why did you take my shit stained pants out of the washer? <laughs> what, I can't enjoy poop now? <laughs> <laughs> are you scat enthusiast now? <laughs> what if I was? That's good. <laughs> yeah, this is good. There's also I I don't want to do the other theater exercise, but we do a similar thing where we have an accent, and you'd have to like face off with that accent, and then the That's next fun. person. But it was so fucking hard. Oh yeah, you're just get so tongue tied immediately. Well, they also high school theater, even college theater. Never in my life have I had 
an accent or dialect lesson. Yeah. They don't teach you that. They're just like, can you do a fucking, just do it. Yeah. New York, British, Jersey. Yeah. Southern. I one time bought like a book of like phonetics. The thing is when you buy a book of phonetics, you have to read it. Yeah. Even like, even if they spell out how to say it, I don't know what that means. You know, like I could be like A capital Y dash S E. I'm like, I don't even now. I don't know. Yeah, I did that for a live show, and you were like, "What is this?" Yeah, I was like I even put how to say it. Dude, phonetics is so crazy. I love that was my favorite class in Spanish because mm-hmm. it's so cool to think like we all speak the same language, language, but why is it so different? Mm-hmm. I mean, I so with ADHD people like we mirror people like um so like uh, oftentimes this is a bad thing. Usually, if someone's speaking with an accent, my brain to show that I'm acting actively listening will imitate their accent M- mimic them yeah but it's not like to be offensive it's like it's it's to show that i'm listening i did you know? that to harry styles <laughs> you did that to harry styles <laughs> Yeah, I mocked him to his face. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm manifesting. It's a thing in Broski Nation that I'm probably going to, I'm manifesting meeting Austin Butler. Even yeah. Even I don't, but I want to. Yeah. I'm going to mock him to his face. Uh-huh. Oh, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be like, thank you for. What do you think about that? I don't, I've never listened to Austin Bus- Butler speak. <laughs> Austin Buster. So I don't know like what he naturally That's sounds, what he sounds like. like. <laughs> Hey, you got a ghoul. Hey, you, hey. you could have told me that that is Austin Butler yeah. and I'd have been like, hell yeah. No, he just like didn't shake the Elvis accent. He mm. still thinks he's Elvis. Yeah. Which is so slay. I love that. He's in character. Yeah. Just like I am. Mm. There's also social bots. These bots often <laughs> considered great. opinion bots influence discussion with users on social media platforms. I think those are those types of bots who like comment like inflammatory things. When you're like women and men and then the bot reads the term women and men together and it has to say something sexist. Oh, I've had that happen. I have not. Oh, well, you're not talking about the right things. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. <laughs> yes. I'm not hitting the hard hitting uh, <laughs> topics. Uh, there's also shop bots. Uh, many of these programs shop around the web and locate the best price for a product a user is interested in buying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, other oh, there- shop bots like the Shopify chatbot enable Shopify store owners to automate marketing and customer support. Mm-hmm. It's nice. Have you used um Honey? Yes. <laughs> Speaking no, <laughs> this episode is not Cut sponsored. You. Um, there's the other one, the little blue one, Klarna, Klarma, or something like that. I've I've done like uh, payments on Klarna. Tea. But I haven't done. Um, Maybe Karma is the one I'm thinking of. I'm not sure. I uh, honestly, this is not sponsored by Honey, but I do use Honey. Yeah. It just like shows up. It's like, do you want a coupon? I'm like, yeah. I'd I'm like, like a- yeah, and I do. Okay. Yeah, I like to save money. What, um, are you, what are you online shopping for as of lately? Literally makeup, like all the time. Really? And like sweatsuits and like shoes and just like because my body's changing. Sure. Yeah. You're a growing boy. I, I know. I just want to like, I mean, I the, literally I wear clothes until they disintegrate. Yeah. I'm literally wearing a pair of underwear right now that I've scratched my crotch so many times. <laughs> There's a massive hole this size in the front. It covers the bottom. <laughs> that happens to me too. But I just like, you know, like when men's underwear disintegrates, I do that too. <laughs> I've always wondered why does holy underwear exist? I don't know, but. And now I know. Yeah, dude, when I get like lacy underwear, immediately put oh, my fingers through the lace. Yeah. And you're it done. just all tears. Yeah, you're done. I'm just so violent with my crotch. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I'm literally, literally, this is gonna sound crazy. I've been buying like essentials, just like underwear and socks. And, I like, recently bought underwear too. Dude, I was on Facetime with someone. I have a pair of pants from the hospital when I stayed at there one time, and like the, the crotch completely massive hole, and they like saw directly <laughs> into the eye of the storm, because I was sitting crisscross. The eye of the beast. Yeah, like the eye of Saruman or whatever oh, the fuck. God. But I, I wear things until they disintegrate because they just get comfy. Yeah, it's that like it's butter, buttery yeah. material. And my parents also like scared me shitless about like spending a bunch of money like growing up. I will spend a lot of money on food, but clothes I have to be like, oh shit, like this has to be like the shit, you yeah, know? Yeah. yeah. I love ready clothes. Mm-hmm, me too. Me around the house and I don't wear that shit out. Yeah. I get embarrassed. Yeah. I think shame is good for it, those sort of things. I literally just bought a book on shame. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And we have it with us in studio. Healing the shame that binds you. <laughs> I literally just bought this book. Well, you said that you're going somewhere after this, so I had to get out of your car. <laughs> hey, everyone. It's Brittany, and today's episode is sponsored by Honey. You know them, you love them. It's the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. 
Now listen, I love spending money online, almost to a level that is concerning to my friends and family. I used to Google coupons to use to try and like save a quick buck, but never had success. They were always expired or just didn't work. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. So imagine this, you're shopping, one of your favorite sites. You go to check out, the Honey button appears, and all you gotta do is click apply coupons. And yeah, I say coupons, okay? Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If it finds a working one, you'll watch the prices drop. Now, I recently bought some perfume I've been eyeing for a while, and Honey actually saved me some money on the purchase. W Honey, let's absolutely go! Honey doesn't just work on desktop either, it works on your iPhone too. Activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. So if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. I'd never recommend something I don't use. Y'all know this. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash VCG. That's joinhoney.com slash VCG. Hey guys, it's Brittany. Spring fever is in the air. With the smell of fresh blooms and the sun shining down upon us, you can't help but feel inspired to spice things up and explore your inner desires and fantasies. Find stories that match your mood this season on Dipsy. Whether it's a warm cup of coffee, basking in warm sunlight, or listening to a sexy story, pleasure is all around us. Now with Dipsy, your sanctuary is waiting. Escape into a world where pleasure is your only priority. Now you all know I'm a fan fiction reader and self-proclaimed author. Seriously, stop the applause. As a writer, I know that moods change. And one day you have a craving for a certain story, other days maybe something different. You're allowed to switch things up when you feel like it. Yesterday you were jamming to country music. Today you're deep into a throwback playlist. Now listen, I'm somewhat of a tastemaker myself being a fan fiction writer, so I feel qualified to speak on how good some of these stories are. With Dipsy, you can always choose what feels good in the moment. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and characters, no matter who or what you're into. Find stories about that intriguing coworker with a British accent, hooking up with your hot yoga instructor. They even have stories designed specifically for your zodiac sign. Go figure. New content is released every week, so in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. Dipsy also has sleep stories, wellness sessions, and now they also offer written stories. It's your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, or oh, heat things up with a partner. For listeners of this show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash VCG. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash VCG. Dipsystories.com slash VCG. Thank you guys. Yeah, I, I, need, <laughs> I need to work on my shame, but back to bots. There's also <laughs> There's also no bots. Uh, these programs. Oh, I just got a got a cramp in my foot. The, these programs collect knowledge for a user by automatically visiting websites to retrieve info that meets certain specified criteria. No bots were originally used as a computerized assistant that performed redundant tasks. And that's no K N O W. K N O W. W. No bots. And then, S- hey, I'll take this one. Don't right. even worry about it. Spiders or crawlers. Also known as web crawlers, these bots access websites and gather content for indexes in search engines such as Google and Bing. Stanley says, mad spooky. Mm -hmm. It is. Why would you call it spider? That's so intimidating and scary. Yeah. Anyway, there's other ones. Web scraping crawlers, monitoring bots, transactional bots. Mm -hmm. And then there's this diagram because we're simple. It's good bots versus bad bots graphic. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I think... um, I mean, like I said before, there's it's who programs it. Mm-hmm. It's not so much the software, it's how it's used. So some of the malicious ones are spam bots, which post promotional content to drive traffic to a specific website, mm-hmm. which is, in my opinion, the most annoying yeah. and the most prevalent, mm-hmm. at least on uh, social media. Yeah. That's, that's what I see. And if it's not spam bots of like, you know, check out this product or it's like dm me i don't know what those are the fake sugar daddy ones yeah first 10 people to dm me what are they 
I trying th- to get. I think it's just like your credit card information or something, or like place a virus on your computer, get personal information about you. Yeah, it's probably just get personal information about you. I, yeah, that would make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, hackers, another great one. Hackers, Malware. They scare stuff. the shit out of me. Hackers. I feel like. Um, but I'm so turned on by them. I don't know what it is. It's a skill. They you love that, a skill. I love someone with a skill that's just like terrifying. Yeah. Like a black belt in karate. Yeah. Yeah. They could kill you. Yeah. Hackers could steal all of your personal information. Mm-hmm. And Do you, you like the danger? I would. I wonder what it's like to date a hacker. I feel like that would be like, you know scary it's like dating a singer like if i dated a singer and they wrote a song about me i'd be like oh fuck if i dated a hacker like it's just i mean i guess i date anyone who has a skill that could like really seriously hurt my feelings Sure, that or um could go to prison yeah (laughs) yeah that's like a bonnie and clyde Mm -hmm. my boyfriend's a hacker yeah oh he he is yeah sick (laughs) it's crazy how easy it is to hack things you Um, hacked anything no (laughs) so why'd you say that then i don't know well because i I see hackers hack stuff all the time (laughs) They make it look easy. Yeah, they do. They're Dude. like, I'm in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. I just. I wonder if real hackers watch movies like that and they're like. <sighs> oh, yeah. Have you ever seen like those interviews where like they show like hacking scenes to a hacker and they try to tell you which one is the most realistic? Those come up on my suggested. Yeah. And I would like I'm going to watch them now. I watched one the other day of a lawyer watched like legal yeah. scenes like the um, a lot of people really like the legally blonde scene. Yeah. Um, they said like there were some issues with it. But I love when someone in the profession. It's like. Oh my gosh, when I watch movies about influencers. Like yeah. when I when they get right. Yeah, when an influencer is in the movie is like I got like a million hits. There is no way if Brittany and I were would say hits to a website yeah. unless we're talking about like the only the only way I could like rationalize using that is if like we're like a marketing campaign and that's with the term that they're using and now I adopt that term. Yeah, but that's never it. Yeah, or like the uh, 2022 and these movies are still using like hashtags. I would only use a hashtag if it was for a certain campaign. Yeah. I wouldn't be like hashtag bay. Right. So I imagine that's like Unless you're being ironic. Yeah, Um, but that's how I imagine like hackers, like lawyers feel during these like sort of like scenes in movies where it's like no one ever does this. Or if they are, it's like you understand the context in which they would have thought that was okay to use. Yeah. It's like, sure, if this was 2013, you'd be like, hashtag summer of my dreams or fucking whatever. And it's also like, oh my God, I just watched this gross movie with, um, what was it called? It was... Some girl and Dylan O'Brien was in it, and it mm-hmm. was this girl who like faked that she was in a terrorist attack. Uh huh. Have you seen the trailer for this? No. Insane. Bad movie, by the way. Yeah. Bad, awful movie. Um, they used the term um, "you're going viral." Oh yeah. When there was like ten thousand likes on it, you're viral. Yeah. I was like, I don't. Uh, it just. I, get it. I know it's so bad. It's so cringy. I kind of. I kind of want to. Oh, now I want to do a YouTube video about that. Yeah. Uh, us reacting to influencers in movies. That would be good. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. So write that down. Write that down. Um, there's also, let's move along. There's like malicious bots. You know, spam bots post promotional content to drive traffic to a specific website. Read that already. Okay. <laughs> um, credential stuffing tools, email addresses, harvesting software, mm-hmm. brute force password cracking tools. Cute. Where just a hacker breaks into your home and threatens you with a hammer. Yeah. You have to unlock your bank account. <laughs> Please stop. You have to use face ID. Yes. <laughs> Key loggers. And then there's social media bots. Um, so Stanley linked a an infographic from actually the home national. Hello? Homeland <laughs> Security. <laughs> what the fuck? And they have a social media bots overview. Yeah. Which is crazy to think that anyone would be like. Let me get to the bottom of this. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, like, if you are older or, like, technologically illiterate, you would pro- this would, be, like, be really helpful. And then you're going to trust what the government tells you? That's true. Um, introduction, a social bot is an agent. Yep, there we go. Um, so a social bot is an agent that communicates autonomously on social media. The messaging, example, tweets it distributes can be simple and operate in groups in various configurations with partial human control, hybrid. Social bots can also be artificial, Use also use AI to express messages in more natural human dialogue. I want to talk about the uses. Okay. So a big question is why? Why do we see these bots? What are they? Where do they come from? And so I want to talk about some of the uses of, you know, why they write this software. One of them is to influence people's decisions 
advertise a product, whatever, make money. That's mm-hmm. number one. Number two, support a political campaign. That's always going to be something online. Yeah. Number three, increase engagement statistics for a social media page. And additionally to that is to foster fame. So yeah. when you leave, you know, maybe like Twitter and you're getting into Instagram or TikTok or whatever, you see sometimes they accuse Charlie of this, of inflated followers, you know, of buying spam bot followers. Uh-huh. And you can usually see this. I mean, if you guys are have been under a rock, this is how you know is like. If there's 45 million followers oh, and yeah. you go on their profile and each video gets like 7,000 likes. Dude, yeah. When you go on Instagram and you see someone has a million followers and they've got like 15 likes, you're like, dude. It's like this is. And and I wonder, too, because that doesn't matter anymore. I mean, you and I both do this as a profession. Yeah. Followers mean nothing. It's about engagement. Yeah. It's about how many people are engaging with your content, liking it, commenting on it, sharing it. Mm-hmm. That is what specifically brands want. Yeah. And so for this, it's like, I don't think that they, I think they developed this software mm-hmm. thinking, you know, like, oh, this is going to money. And yeah. now it's like, no, it just makes you look pitiful, actually. Kind of, yeah. Because <clears throat> if you had 100,000 followers, 7,000 likes on each post, that's pretty good. Yeah. You know, like that's. Especially with today's algorithm, it's like yeah. everything gets hidden. Yes. Yeah. And so when you have 45 million people in air quotes following you and you're hiding your likes on instagram it's like that's not the serve you think it is it's like you're embarrassed by those likes Mm -hmm. and it's it's this weird culture too of um equaling it out dude i used to know some people i will not name them but if their instagram photo didn't get a hundred thousand likes within the first 24 hours they would take it down shit archive it I would do that in, like, high school with, like, 50 likes. Yeah. Honestly. I mean, that, yeah, when we were teenagers. Yeah. I was a grown-ass man. I was like, oh, oh uh, shit. It's kind of cringe. Because it's like, yes, it matters in the mm-hmm. terms of money-making, but yeah. it doesn't matter in the in terms of your worth, your likability, mm-hmm. your whatever. I was on Casey Musgrave's account the other day. She gets, like, 100,000 likes a photo. Yeah. Casey fucking Musgrave's. Mm-hmm. Like, there is a translatability factor between real life fame like ability and you know talent yeah versus attention and likes you get online mm-hmm. it is absolutely not the same thing yeah so i feel like bots don't really <laughs> help you that much yeah they don't help in fact they kind of harm you in yeah. that way because now you can be accused of faking followers engagement all that which is icky and you can do that to certain influencers if you want to get like an influencer flagged Mm. you could buy a lot of bots for them (laughs) and then bots show up on their account and so like when the individual platforms are like doing a review of like the follower amount if there's a large amount of bots like that could like flag your account scary yeah it's kind of weird um there's yeah so let's finger a technologist for Google, LinkedIn, Snap, holy shit. Good finger. They're everywhere. Um, identifies five immediate uses for social bots, you know, to foster fame. Having advertising bots and online chats is similar to email spam, but a little bit more direct. Mischief. <laughs> General mischief. Yeah. Uh, signing up for uh, signing up an opponent with a lot of fake identities and spamming the account or helping others discover to discredit the opponent, yep. like we just said. Yep. Uh, bias, public opinion, influence trends by countless messages of similar content. Uh, limits free speech. Important messages can be pushed out of sight by a deluge of automated bot messages, and then fish passwords or other personal data. That is a scary one. Limit free speech. Mm-hmm. Important messages can be pushed out of sight. Yeah, I think that's uh, again like for, for if we don't say it enough on this podcast, the internet is not real life. No, it is a fabricated reality. It is an alternate reality. Yeah. Everything you see has been perfectly curated for you by your activity online. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's kind of cringe to say it, but the whole, like, go touch grass thing. Is so helpful. It has validity to it. Like, please. We were just talking about on the way here, like, sometimes it gets very overwhelming. Yeah. Where... And just talking about how much information is readily available to us at all times and how doom scrolling is so Mm -hmm. common and so, like, we just find ourselves doing it. It's like, 
lock the phone yeah and go outside it is so helpful to go outside like if someone is yelling at me and making me feel like less than online yeah. i could block them but dude people get crazy online but literally walking outside the apartment and being yeah. like what the f-? if i could go up to literally anyone on the street and i'd be like do you are you mad at me they'd be like who the fuck are yeah, you get away from me yeah it's like it truly doesn't <laughs> matter you know? you know yeah it just feels so larger than life when you're alone in your room, yeah. on your phone, and that's all that matters. Naked and in your bed. Naked, sobbing, yes. crying, <laughs> sweating. <Yeah. laughs> um, so I, I feel like that is, we don't say it enough. You know, a mm-hmm. lot of this is fun in games and it's fun to talk about, but at the point where it gets too much and it's all consuming, you can go outside. Yeah, and you, you should. Yeah, you don't have to be in this all the time. Mm-hmm. It's it's a little harder for us, I feel like, because... It's our job. It's our job. And yeah. this used to be a way for me to unwind when yeah. I was at my 9 to 5. And, you know, this was something I enjoyed as a hobby. That's how I went viral is because I, I enjoyed posting videos. And I find myself more often than not getting just fed up. Yeah. Just overwhelmed. Because I put myself in that position. I don't do it in moderation. Yeah. And so... Things like this, even talking about bots, Mm -hmm. is something that we encounter so much to the point where we're like, let's make an episode about that. It's so crazy. We're so far deep in this shit, dude. Mm -hmm. Not like y'all didn't know that, but. Yeah. Anyway. So let's talk about the history of social bots. You go for it. Besides being able to reproduce or reuse messages autonomously, also share many traits with spam bots with respect to their tendency to infiltrate large user groups. Uh, Twitter bots are already well-known examples, but corresponding autonomous agents on Facebook and elsewhere have also been observed. Facebook bots are scary, I bet. They are. <laughs> it's just like, MAGA, give me back my casserole dish. Am I sexy? <laughs> Am I sexy? <laughs> yeah. I love Trump. Yeah. <laughs> Hey y'all, it's Brittany, and I'm coming to y'all on the live pre-recorded voice memo to tell y'all about Thrive Cosmetics. Now, cause, C-A-U-S-E, is in the name for a reason. Every purchase supports organizations that help communities thrive. Thrive Cosmetics is a line of high-performance beauty and skincare products made with clean, skin-loving ingredients. No parabens, sulfates, or phthalates, you goobers. They're certified 100% vegan and cruelty-free. That's what we like to hear. I personally use the Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara, which to no surprise is their best-selling product with over 20,000 five-star reviews. It mimics that look of lash extensions without damaging glue or expensive salon prices. It lasts all day without clumping, smudging, or flaking. And you know, I rub my eyes all the time never budges. It's so nice. It also comes off super easy. The formula slides right off with warm water and a washcloth. No soap required. How do they do it? It's got my stamp of approval. Like I mentioned before, Thrive Cosmetics is bigger than beauty. And for every product purchased, Thrive Cosmetics donates to help communities thrive. They've got over 300 giving partners across the country supporting numerous causes. So now is a great time to try Thrive Cosmetics for yourself. Right now, you can get 15% off your first order when you visit thrivecosmetics.com slash VCG. That is Thrive Cosmetics, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash VCG for 15% off your first order. Thanks, y'all. Nowadays, social bots are equipped with or can generate convincing um, convincing internet personas that are well capable of influencing real people. It's so easy to influence people. I didn't realize that. It's <laughs> it's really really easy. I know that a majority like honestly, 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 a majority of you wouldn't follow like if I wanted to start a cult right now, I guarantee that 10% of our audience would be down. I'd be down. Would be so <laughs> it, without question and it, it, that's like and so you think about how much 10% is. It's like crazy. I always thought about like, you know, cult leaders where I'm like, how did you find these people? Honestly, if you you There's honestly, somebody yeah, yeah dude. somebody out there. I blindly followed Christ for like 18 years. <laughs> and Chris Angel. Yeah, and I consider myself, I still follow him, uh, but I consider myself like a rational, smart person. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That you could be susceptible. I'm not saying that you guys are dumb. I'm saying that like. No, it's 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 the preying upon mentally vulnerable people. Yeah. That's how cults are successful. Mm-hmm. It's finding a group of people who need identity and need a purpose, and yeah. you offer that solution. If I give you reason enough to live, or like look at updates that I'm, yeah, you could, you would follow me to like the ends of the earth. I have a cult. Yeah, it's called y- Broski Nation. You do. I'm it's th- relatively harmless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Scared of them. Yeah, it's very uh, 
you guys you guys go to bat and i appreciate that mm-hmm. it's an army i i think my audience is shower thoughts yeah t-h-o-t-s nice yeah so it's like yeah okay um nice. so using social bots is against the terms of service of many platforms like twitter instagram although it's allowed to some degree by others such as reddit and discord yeah bots on reddit and discord are like part of the culture i don't think i've i don't really go on those websites well i'll speak on reddit okay yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i mean the little the little icon is a little bot really yeah oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the reddit logo he's kind of cute mm-hmm. i spent 30 minutes the other day trying to pick my reddit avatar really they're all ugly would you land on um, it was a little, she had little pigtails and camo. <laughs> I was like, I want them to think I serve. Oh, God. Um, so even for social media platforms that restrict social bots, a certain degree of auto- autom- automation, sorry, is of course intended by making social media APIs available. Don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, social media platforms have also developed their own automated tools to filter out messages that come from bots. Yeah, that's true. You can, did you fart? No. Oh, thank God. I, I was, was farting during the last episode. It was lit- It's so hot in here that if yeah. you fart, it would like... Oh, it me- would kill a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Knock out an infant. Kills all my eggs. <laughs> I immediately go into menopause. Infertile. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, although they are not advanced enough to detect all bot messages. Um, the topic of legal regulation of social bots is becoming more urgent to policymakers in many countries. Dude, I cannot even imagine our fucking legal system as it is trying to explain bots like dude dude trying to explain bots to like the average age of like people in the senate no. of the house or they fucking, don't even understand what abortion is you're like this is a huge problem they'll be like explain it to me like i'm five it's yeah. like oh god can't i can't <laughs> you're just an idiot like dude there are like people like um fucking like again yeah, abortion thing they're like ectopic pregnancy physically cannot like the baby's basically dead and they're like just put it in the womb and it's like it doesn't work like that you dipshit and so like now i'm uh, i'm thinking about like explaining boss to them and they're yeah. like i'm like i have no faith you're like so where are these russian women who yeah. are single and alone <laughs> yes. well it's, they're saying they're there mm-hmm. if they're consenting adults <laughs> it's a bot, it's a bot. Yeah. have you seen benny dramas skit of which oh yeah the bots <laughs> oh, yeah yeah <laughs> i want to play it no not right now oh, okay it's so good if y'all don't follow benny skinner on instagram i am obsessed with him first of all for yeah. Stormus. and he did this one where he's got this breastplate on and he's like you do not want to see my story wait till later yeah <laughs> Whatever. he's like any single american boys 24 <laughs> Oh, good. I just love bots. They're so basic and gross. I get so pissed. Really? And you know what? They only appear on my verified TikTok. Yeah. I'll post a brand deal or I'll post a normal skit or whatever. And the first comments are always bots. Yeah. And I literally delete them. Yeah. And it sucks because it's like, I don't know if it's something about those ones are programmed to only go on verified posts. Yeah. Because on my spam, I don't get those. Yeah. I don't get spam comments. Mm-hmm. Well, on, on my spam account i don't get spam comments interesting i don't know what it is i i do think that it's geared towards because you see that on a lot of big tiktokers the top comments are like am i sexy yeah three thousand <laughs> likes because yes. people just give in now yeah. they're like she is sexy yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll click the link in your bio i'll throw her a bone mm. There's also a Russian disinformation campaign. Social bots have been used by the Russian government in spreading misinformation to destabilize the West, weaken NATO allies, and more. Let's go! The Russians. In 2014, Russia used social bots to spread misinformation about the invasion of Crimea. And in 2022, it did the same Ugh. thing with invading Ukraine to try and convince people that the invasion invasion was for the good of the Ukrainian people. So scary. Dude. Do you have know you, oh, you go ahead. how stupid you have to be to like think that they're being invaded for a good reason? Wild. That that you no what trying to justify it Wild. yeah um did you watch the Chernobyl series <laughs> no I did it why the I mean we all know that like governments lie yes governments hide information from their people and that is across the board across the world people in power will do that the extent to which the Russian government did that during the Chernobyl crisis in the 80s yeah. was mind blowing. Yeah. Like I watched this. I know obviously it's it's television, so it's dramatized. But at the same time, I because you know, after you watch something like that, I always go and watch the like a documentary on it, actually, yeah. or whatever, because it piqued my interest. It is scary how the documents were like all blacked out or all like you have nothing to worry about. They're, they were in a nuclear blast zone. Yeah. Like that is 
they were issuing things, you know, like, okay, go just evacuate. You'll be back in your homes in 24 hours. The area is still uninhabitable today. Yeah. Like if you go into Chernobyl, the blast site today, you are, you have to sign a waiver and stuff like that. It's just wild that this is so understandable Mm -hmm. because it's just scary. Yeah, it is. Withholding that much information and then on top of that, actively spreading this information. Yeah. It's just freaky. Well, it's easier to control people who are uninformed. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Keep them in the dark. There's also the 2016 presidential election. Social bots appear to have played a significant role in the 2016 U.S. Mm -hmm. presidential election. And their history appears to go back uh, at least to the United States midterm elections in 2010. In 1865. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's it's estimated when the Declaration of Independence was signed. Yes, there were spam bots on the Declaration. Yeah. It is estimated that 9 to 15% of active Twitter accounts may be social bots. And that 50% of the total Twitter population active in the U.S. presidential election discussion were bots. Wow. Holy shit. Um, at least 400,000 bots were responsible for about 3.8 million tweets, roughly 90% of the total oh. volume. Holy God. That's so many accounts. I know. Jesus. And Detection. The, mm-hmm. the first generation of bots could sometimes be distinguished from real users by their often superhuman capacities <laughs> to post messages around the clock and at massive rates. Mm-hmm. Later developments have succeeded in imprinting more human activity and behavioral patterns in the agent. To unambiguously detect social bots as what they are, a variety of criteria must be applied together using pattern pattern detection techniques, some of which are cartoon figures as user pictures sometimes, Mm -hmm. random real user pictures are captured, reposting rate temporal pattern, reposting rate temporal patterns, sentiment expressions, followers to friends ratio, (laughs) Stanley put. <laughs> Stanley put L plus ratio plus you're a bot plus I can tell from your L follower friend ratio. Yeah. It's good. When they follow like 7,000 people and only have like 12 followers. Mm-hmm. So they have good. like a gray photo. Yes, dude. Slay. They just call you ugly all the time and it's like, who programmed this? Or it's like, <laughs> slut. Yes. And I'm like, oh, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> God. God. I'm going to touch it. some grass. <laughs> Uh, so the length of usernames variability in reposted messages engagement rate and then the like followers rate. Imagine just lame as fuck with no notable following that you just pass as a bot. Dude, my that's what Stanley said. <laughs> my I, funny concept. I have a private account that I switch to to like look at what, bully. Yeah, yeah. W- bully. And so it's but yeah, I look like a bot. Yeah, it's like by design. Am I sexy? Yes. You're commenting that on mine. <laughs> no, but I'm I'm commenting that genuinely on mine. <laughs> Am I sexy? Guys, am I sexy? Yeah. Click the link in my bio. <laughs> <laughs> There's a botometer, formerly bot or not, public web service that checks the activity of a Twitter account and gives it a score based on how likely the account is to be a bot. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, the system leverages over a thousand features. An active method that worked well in detecting early spam bots was to set up honeypot accounts where obvious nonsensical content was posted and then dump, uh, dumbly reposted, retweeted by bots. Hmm. However, recent studies show that bots evolve quickly and detection methods have a, have to be updated constantly because otherwise they may get useless after a few years. So who really benefits from social bots? It is difficult to determine who is actually behind a social bot. Me. So far, <laughs> there is no method that can be accurately identify fake accounts. Therefore, That's the thing, too. Yeah. is like, what's the purpose? Just, again, get people's credit card information. Get money. Is that, yeah, I guess. If it's not... Well, porn bots freak me out, too. Because mm-hmm. it's like... What if, what if, what if? Yeah, like, honestly, who? but who's at this point falling for a porn bot? I know I joke that I have, but, like, <laughs> I see, like, I see so many bot account. Everyone sees, like, you know, am I sexy? Yeah. And then there's, like, 200 likes that showed up after, like, half a second. Yeah. You know, like, you know, you have common sense that this is fake. Yeah. Who, what simpleton is, like, falling for a Sp- like a porn bot at this it's point. It's gotta be middle aged men. Yeah. Like literally, that's it. <laughs> yes. Well, damn. Um, therefore, it's harder to track down the responsible operator. However, there are roughly four groups that can benefit from using social bots social marketer, influencer. Yes! Do I don't know if I use bots. I've never used bots. But the marketing. If you had, I would be upset with you. Yeah. I mean, but no, even as like a marketer, because I did social mar- like social media marketing. There's something so inherently unethical about that. Yeah. All right. This campaign's bombing. Let's just buy a bunch of bots. Get oh, some yeah. likes on this gig. It's like, no, dude. Dude, it's so crazy thinking about like, I did like social media marketing and like for some like campaigns, you like pay for like different objectives, like engagement or impressions. And usually if you're like 
product is like fairly simple to buy like t-shirts or like earrings you pay for like impressions you don't really need i mean you could get engagement but like i would have like people who did like plastic surgery campaigns pay for an impression campaign oh, so i'm like dude. you do you know that you have to target these people yeah like you because because it's thousands of dollars like no one's just Sure, you have like a big audience, but you need to target the people who can buy yeah. this fucking plastic surgery. Yeah, it's crazy. But um, also, impressions is smart because it's like a lot of people consider plastic surgery. Yeah, but I mean, they, a lot of people can't afford plastic sure. surgery. You can a Bugatti can if they advertise. A lot of people could consider buying a Bugatti. Sure, there's probably only a handful of people that could actually buy it. Sure. Mm-hmm. And it's just DJ Khaled. <laughs> it's just he has so many. He's so. Um, DJ Khaled, what an anomaly of a person. <laughs> he doesn't eat pussy. Remember that? I do remember that. He He's like his wife. I was like, oh my God. Why would you ever say that out loud? Yeah, why would you? There was this fucking <laughs> interview clip of Jack Harlow on, was it Academics? Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Comment no. down below. It, I think it was Academics. He went on his podcast or his radio show and... He's talking about, not Jack Harlow, the academics, is talking about oh. how um, he was still learning his wife's body. Uh-huh. And, like, he doesn't make her come because uh-huh. it's still, you know, like, sex is, he was her first and all this. And they got together in high school and they're still figuring it out. And Jack's face the whole time is, like, <laughs> like appalled. This dude just said that out loud. Yeah. Like, oh, so you don't make your wife yeah. Climax during sex. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> why did you say that? Dude, DJ Khaled, why did you say that too? I know, dude. Like, it's it's crazy. Like, you're still learning your wife's body. It's not even that hard to understand. No. And, like, that's something so personal. Yeah. If my fucking husband was on a podcast talking about, yeah, dude, I just can't figure her out. There's something new every single yeah. time I go down there. Her body is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah. So, there's also... Going back to this, political figures, <laughs> lobby groups or political figures are suspected of using social bots. That makes sense. Mm. Um, American, C- For example, the American Secret Service suspect uh, that Russian hackers were behind many fake accounts and social bots during the U.S. campaign. And then people interested in public opinion forming. Uh, these are users that want to inf- uh, influence the opinion of others yeah. via social bots. They can be individuals, groups, organizations, or <laughs> criminals. Yeah. Criminals. The third group, a collective of people that are hard to identify, is possibly the largest of the groups mentioned here. Those involved use bots to benefit a party or to raise awareness of certain issues or simply cause trouble. That's me. Dude, just um, if your purpose online is to just like wreck other people's day. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It feels like the majority of internet users are there (laughs) for that purpose. Well, my gosh, just take, I mean, yeah, take out your like anger on other people. Yeah, crabs in a bucket. Yeah. Climb. They will pull each other down. Yes. Yes. Two things I'm going to mention. Cannibal cookbook, crabs in a bucket. It's crazy that you have to boil crabs alive. That makes me so sad. I feel like you don't have to. They just like to. Lobster and crab. That's so, so sad. Well, what's the alternative? Rip their arm off? I mean... (laughs) You can't, like, lobotomize them? Like, stick a little ice pick through their, like, you know, shell? (laughs) Just... (laughs) Just, like, twirl it around in there. Yeah, just Actually, that's so inhumane. I feel like any way to killing an animal, even if it's a crustacean, is just kind of like, mm-hmm. I wouldn't do it personally. The longer I look at crabs and uh, lobsters, I think of cockroaches. Yeah. Like, sea co- Ew, I just got to chill. I know, I know. You ever seen a horseshoe crab? Yeah. Oh! Dude, things at the bottom of the ocean are downright terrifying. Yeah, but I would that's, agree. Your body has to like adjust to like thousands of pounds of pressure. Oh. Um, well, they're gross, and they're, yeah. Personally, if I lived at the bottom of the ocean, I wouldn't look like that. No. <laughs> I'd be pretty. Yes. <laughs> you bitches are just ugly. If you were a sea critter, what would you be? A sea critter? Sea critter. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I would be a whale. I'd be a dolphin. Really? I love dolphins. Yeah. My mom used to have, like, all, like, a shit ton of, like, dolphin, like, figurines. You like, that's, that's her, like, animal that she loves, dolphins. Oh, I don't want to be associated with your mom. Oh, well, what's the animal that your mom loves? Birds. Birds. Yeah. Interesting. Birds are so fucking scary, dude. They are. You seen those videos of ravens just full on speaking English? Yeah. Or crows, whatever they are? Dude, birds are like the embarrassing type of scary. Yeah. We're like getting attacked by a lion, horrifying. Yeah. Getting attacked by birds, humiliating. Yeah. That's like that meme where it's like uh, getting hit by a car, so embarrassing. <laughs> dude, when I got hit by a car and I lived, <laughs> I rolled off the 
this guy's hood and he literally rolled down his window and he's like, I'm so sorry, I gotta go. Yeah. And he pulled off and I was just, my ankles were black. And it was so embarrassing to be hit by a car and live. Yeah. And that's bird attacks. Getting attacked by a goose. Just grab it, dude. Uh, grab its neck and shake Stop. it around. Roll. Oh, take a bite. Oh. Yes. Yeah. No, it is. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I saw this video the other day of um, ducks in a pool. Yeah. And all the babies had fallen in the pool and the mom got out. She was just like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and this girl was helping fish it out with like a pool skimmer. Yeah. And one of the comments was like, how have ducks lived this long? Exactly. I was like, good point. Yeah. I mean, how have so many animals like lived this long? Well, the sad answer is they probably won't for much longer. Yeah. We are killing them. Damn. And there are, a, I don't even know, there's a four type of bot person, those with no re- uh, recognizable interests, just... The number of similarly harmless social bots, for example, leave a crazy amount of likes on Star Wars comments. Yeah, me. Yeah, they're just like aimless. They have no purpose. Yeah. <laughs> a bot with no purpose. <laughs> the name of my autobiography. What's that stupid Rick and Morty joke where it's like, what is my purpose? You cut butter. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to make a Rick and Morty reference. Yeah, we're on the same wavelength. Yeah, in season five, Rick has two crows. He leaves Morty and he's like, it's the Rick and Two Crows show <laughs> to, to prove a point that yeah. Morty's useless. You talk about the dangers. We can also do uh, the follower factory, but I want to do the funny bots, social media bot memes. Okay. So we're going to look at some bot accounts on Twitter. They're funny. Um, Brittany's going to take some time to plug that into her computer. All right. First up, moth generator. <laughs> okay. So this, what we're looking at right now is a bot that generates pictures of moth. <gasps> Moths. Olivia Newton John died? Oh no! What the fuck? Oh my god. Olivia, aw, 73. What the fuck? Oh, that's so sad. No! Sorry, we're finding out some devastating re- news in real time. Oh no, all the green. Oh god, he looks so bad. Talking about John Travolta. Sorry. Aw, we're so- uh, Olivia Newton John really has passed. Sad. Okay, sorry guys. Mm. Fucking really sad, devastated. Okay, so a lot of these are not working out for us, but the next one we're going to check out is poem underscore exe. Exe generate it generates micro poetry based on a technique used by the Olipo po- poet Raymond. Oh my god! One and all, the harvest moon, hot water bottle, <laughs> <laughs> chilly wind, yearning, a cold wind cuts me, chilly wind. I could have written that in fifth grade. Yeah. Softly fluttering with the acorn. <laughs> the moon softly fluttering. These are good. Mm-hmm. And there's one that says, from the bow, the lonely cottage in the autumn wind. Is it, It's so much autumn wind. Snow. A frog sleeps with children. <laughs> <laughs> autumn night. No one drinking. I love the I love those like uh, bot accounts where it's like has this politician died yet, and then every day they like tweet no no <laughs> yeah. no, and yeah. then the one time they tweet like yes and you're like okay so now the bot is like over with, okay a lot of these are not funny. Thanks Stanley, you've got one fucking job. Oh my here I'm gonna look up funny bot messages. <laughs> We're going old school. Stanley. Shit bot shit post bot. <laughs> Shit bot. Okay, this one is an example. It said, I just added you because I liked your picture. Do you like girls with piercings? I have to log off right now. Sad face. What's your cell num? I'll send you some of my photos. And then someone said, haha, this is clearly a bot. Yeah, they like send too much information at once. No normal person talks like this. Yeah. Even the most like confident of horny women are not like, I just added you because I liked your picture. Yeah. I would never say that to anyone. Yeah. It's not casual enough. Even I feel like sex online sex workers don't even yeah. they're not like cold calling <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're like canvassing the neighborhood literally they have like a like a chart and they're like hey so are you looking for horny singles in your area speaking of which and then they just like do their entire pitch at your front yeah, door that would actually be so pitch. fucking funny there's one that says bonjour how would you describe the term bot to your grandma and then they said my grandma is dead all right thank you for your feedback <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this one says, all right, anything else to add to your shopping cart? Add four apples. I meant four bananas. Okay, I added to your shopping cart four apples, four bananas. What the fuck? Who even, is that Instacart? An Instacart bot? I don't know. Why would you, like, select it like that? (coughs) Please forget my personal data. I will forget your personal data. (laughs) 
<laughs> like Star Wars. Hmm. But yeah, a lot of these bots are just like, you'd have to be dumb to like fall for it. And I am dumb. Should we go through ours? Our bot, our bots? Yeah. Do you have any on? Well, I mean, I literally, uh, I, some of these like bot accounts aren't like really that funny, which is wild, wacky. But I mean, I asked people on my Instagram to comment like bots sort of things, like things that bots would say. It just says 175, am I hot? <laughs> That's good. What is up with the bots saying like a random number? I don't know. I thought it was their age at first. This bot is 175 years old. Good for them. <laughs> she is ancient like a tortoise. Yeah. I uh, I usually delete them, the ones that I see. Or I used to like them. Yeah. Or like pin them. Yeah. I'll go find some from those. Mm-hmm. I do like the am I hot ones because it's it does kind of suggest that this person has like a self-confidence issues. Yeah. They need a little validation. Yeah. <laughs> but I kind of want to like reverse image search like the porn star that they are using. Yeah. And be like, hey, do you? And they're probably, honestly, porn stars probably get so fucking like sick of yeah. like everyone using their photos come on dude yeah that is crazy um i think it's funny when people talk to them mm-hmm. or go on their instagram and it's like why you not respond to my dm yeah it's a bot by the way i know like I, it's i mean i can't the, in the d like the messages like the actual like comments like it seems like they can't continue a conversation yeah definitely but not. in like dms they can right but I, I feel like they're, like, programmed to, like, with, like, prompts in, like, the DMs. Yeah. Because if you, like, message them back on, like, in, like, comments, that doesn't do anything. Yeah. They don't do anything. Ugh. When the programming fall <laughs> shits out. Lame. But, I'm yeah. going to start. I've, I've always wondered, too, can you mass report? Because, like, mm. they're just annoying. They're yeah. funny to a certain extent. But when I'm trying to, like, actively talk to... Mm-hmm. my followers or if I have a question or if I really want to see what they thought of my video and the top comments are want to see my p- perky nips yeah <laughs> like, no like not right now believe it or not that's coming from broski nation <laughs> <laughs> that's just one of my moderators yes. not, not now <laughs> yeah keep it in the admin chat come on guys Jesus Christ all right mm-hmm. well thanks for listening you goobers. You guys are great. You are sexy and hot and single in area. 175 flame mm-hmm. emoji. Heart, heart, heart. Click the link in our bio to get tickets to our tour if they're not sold out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we will see you guys on tour. We're super excited about that. I know. Make, sh- make sure to like, subscribe, comment, rate this five stars on Spotify. Apple Music. Google Podcasts. Reddit. YouTube. YouTube. Uh, TikTok. Please. Uh, the Instagram account is not our official one, so maybe don't follow that one, but, but follow us on Instagram. And and TikTok. We have an official account on TikTok. Yes. Thank you guys so much for listening. And we love y'all and we hope y'all be safe on the internet because there's mean people out there trying to get you and your credit card. Mm-hmm. And me and your grandma have had our stuff stolen online a few times, and it's just real scary out there. So y'all keep on. Um, we never you, learn. Yeah, we, and if you know. need money, we'll get you a little twenty dollar bill. Yeah. <laughs> Won't. Two hundred dollar bill. Two hundred dollar bill. Remember, you used to get two dollar bills from your grandparents. Um, no, but when I waitressed, I would always save the two dollar bills. They would pay you in $2 bills. Well, I mean, there's always be always be like that odd guy who's like, you know, Keeps leaves a the tip change, and yeah. you're like, it's a two. Oh. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> there's <laughs> not a slot in the register for this. <laughs> do they still make it? <gasps> it literally, do, like the first option, it said, do they still make $2 bills? It's listening. Ew, Sarah, are you kidding? Oh, my God. In August of 1966, the $2 uh, bill. Where they officially discontinued, although they 66? were... 66? The $2 bills I have are that old? Wait, no, then it says 1976 to present. So why was there a 10-year 10, 10 gap? <sighs> the internet lying once again. I know, but that was crazy. I literally said it, and I, I said, do they still? It's and then listening. the first one was make $2 bills. That's so scary. That's so fucking scary, dude. Dude, we're, I, but it's the fucking boss. <sighs> All right, well, that scared me. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. And kiss your grandmother on the lips. On the mouth, yes. Yes. Be sure to open mouth kiss your family members (laughs) this holiday season. (laughs) Loving you, missing you. Always hoping for the best. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.